Doctor, thanks for joining us. Our topic is something that we're hearing uh, more about in the news and on uh, the TV commercials, vitamin D3. Uh, and so the first question is, how important is vitamin D3 to our overall health? Vitamin D is one of the fat-soluble vitamins, <clears throat> along with vitamins A and E and K, that we take in our diet daily uh, to maintain proper nutrition, health, and function. Um, the vitamin D uh, that we take in comes from our diet through various sources, and we need sunlight to help process uh, the vitamin that we take from our diet uh, into the active form inside our bodies. Um, We've known since the early 1900s that vitamin D is involved with bone structure and function. We saw that kids uh, that were deficient with vitamin D developed rickets. Uh, adults had osteomalacia, osteoporosis, and we've known that for quite some time now. <clears throat> There's more evidence now that there may be much more to it, more different aspects, uh, other areas of the body. <clears throat> areas such as the brain, the heart, uh, lungs, pancreas, even immune system function that might be involved uh, in deficiency states of vitamin D. So that <clears throat> leads into the next question. How serious is a vitamin D deficiency? Well, it can be very serious. Um, what we're seeing now, there's evidence that uh, throughout our body, not just the bones, other cells require <clears throat> vitamin D for proper function. Um, people that are deficient with vitamin D um, may have higher rates of depression if their brain cells aren't properly getting vitamin D. Chronic fatigue, um, there seems to be higher rates of heart disease as well as hypertension, high blood pressure um, with people who are deficient. Uh, there's evidence that the pancreas um, this is the organ that helps produce insulin to control our blood sugars for diabetes as, as well as other aspects of our health. If the pancreas doesn't get adequate vitamin D, uh, it may put us at risk for diabetes. Um, there's even evidence that as far as our immune cells, blood cells, if they don't have adequate vitamin D, it may affect our ability to fight off cancers, infections, uh, on and on and on muscle cells uh, if they don't have adequate vitamin D uh, you may get chronic fatigue as well as generalized muscle aches and pains it may mask other conditions that people may have so. why have we heard so much about this particular vitamin in the news lately probably because it's becoming an epidemic uh, there's estimates that uh, well over 50% of the U.S. population, children, adults, the population as a whole, and maybe as high as 75% might be vitamin D deficient. Uh, we see this around the world uh, as well. Uh, it seems to be more prevalent areas uh, farther away from the equator, up in higher latitudes, where people may not have as adequate uh, exposure to sunlight. What are the symptoms uh, of a vitamin D deficiency? Most of my patients uh, that are deficient have no symptoms at all. Uh, oftentimes we'll find it through routine screening, other things, uh, looking for bone density for osteoporosis, uh, abnormal blood, calcium, um, elderly people who come in after a fracture, and we'll check and lo and behold they're low in vitamin D. Is there a simple screen for that? Uh, there is a blood test that we can check. Um, your doctor will know what test to order whenever you see um, your physician. Um, more and more doctors are keen on the amount of deficiency that we have out in society today. Uh, so various complaints that patients may have, uh, migraines, uh, depression, I'm fatigued all the time, have no energy, chronic medical problems such as heart disease, diabetes, um, your doctor may want to go ahead and check for your vitamin D levels to see if they are adequate. Should I be taking vitamin D supplements and are they safe? They are safe and fortunately uh, most of them are available over the counter in a daily multivitamin uh, or either alone or combined with calcium. In general people that eat adequate diets, well-rounded, 
uh, stay fit, uh, stay active, uh, should not require a whole lot of supplementation. Um, your doctor would know to assess for risk factors that may require more supplementation. If I go buy vitamin D over the counter, how much should I take? Depends on your risk factors and other factors as well, including age. Um, newborns that are exclusively breastfeeding uh, will require vitamin D supplementation um, as well as their breastfeed. Um, children and healthy adults may only require 200 to 400 units a day. Um, that's in addition to what you're getting from your diet. Um, people with chronic medical problems such as heart disease, uh, hypertension, diabetes, or elderly patients, especially sedentary lifestyles not as active as they used to be, uh, nursing home residents, people with osteoporosis or fractures may require doses uh, in excess of 800 or 1,000 units a day. Can I take too much vitamin D? Um, you can. Fortunately, that's pretty rare. Um, we saw this pretty commonly in the early 1900s, again, when we first started to learn about this vitamin. Uh, people were taking upwards of 20,000, 30,000, even 60,000 units a day for a number of months. And uh, fortunately, um, the most we'll recommend is maybe a thousand a day, um, unless your doctor thinks otherwise. So. Are there other ways to increase the vitamin D concentration in my body? Sure. Um, <clears throat> some of the dietary sources that we use, um, many of our foods today are fortified with vitamin D. Milk is one of the most common sources. Uh, cereals, orange juice, uh, a lot of oily fish as we call them, salmon, tuna, mackerel, sardines, just to name a few. Uh, cod liver oil supplements have them as well, um, in addition to the supplements over the counter. Um, adequate sunlight's necessary to process the vitamin D, um, turn it in, into the active form as we discussed already. Well, let's define adequate sunlight. Okay. Um, lighter skinned people will require only five to 10 minutes um, three times a week. Um, in the summer months especially, that's when our body is getting the most sunlight, most UV rays which convert the molecule into its active form. Um, it, that's not a whole lot of sunlight. Um, now darker skinned people, because of the protective effects of darker skin in protecting the body from UV rays, uh, will require a little bit more upwards of 20 to 30 minutes, uh, maybe three to four times a week uh, mm -hmm. during the summer months. So. Can vitamin D3 help with weight loss? Um, <clears throat> there is some evidence that it actually can. Whether it's from the, the actual supplement itself or the effects that it seems to improve health, makes people feel better. You know, people that feel better uh, will tend to be more active, get outside more, more exposure to sunlight, um, try to stay fit. Um, <clears throat> also, taking care of your other chronic medical problems as well. Uh, if you have heart disease, keeping that in tip-top shape. Um, liver problems, keeping your liver in the best shape as you can, as well as the kidneys as well. Um, those will all tend to help. And um, basically, overall health, um, seems to be what uh, helps with the weight loss. Mm. Uh, so. Very well. Doctor, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.